Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a linked list problem, rotate list. We're given the head of a linked list and all we need to do is rotate the list by k places. So what do they actually mean by rotate? Well, let's just take a look at the initial list. You see we have one, two, three, four, five, right? We want to rotate by k places and in this case we see that the input value for k is 2. So what that means is we want to take exactly 2 nodes, k equals 2 nodes from the end of the linked list. So this is our initial linked list so we're going to take the last 2 nodes. And so we're basically going to split these last 2 nodes from the rest of the linked list. So the rest of the linked list is the entire linked list, five nodes minus these two nodes, right? And then you get the remainder of the linked list. And you can see that these two nodes in the result, this is the resulting linked list, right? After the second rotation, this is the first rotation, this is the second rotation, this is the end result. So you can see that these two nodes have been moved over here, right? The order stayed the same. We have a four in the first spot. We have a five in the second spot. And you can see that the first three nodes, basically the remainder of the linked list got pushed to the end of the resulting linked list, right? This is basically what happened, right? So that's basically the problem statement, right? We take the input linked list and basically we take the last k nodes, whatever k is, and then we're going to break the linked list at that point, right? This k is going to tell us this position because we know that this is going to be k. The nodes in the remainder of the linked list is going to be k nodes. And we're going to cut the linked list here and then we're going to basically swap the order. We're going to move the end of the linked list to the beginning of the linked list. That's the algorithm. Now that we understand what we're trying to do, it's actually not too difficult, right? It's pretty simple, but we still have to figure out exactly how we're going to do it. And the main question here with this problem is how are we going to find this position? We know it's possible, but and we know once we find this position, basically all we're doing is swapping. We're basically cutting the linked list here, right? And swapping the positions of the two halves of the linked list. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is because we're counting K places, right? We know K equals two, right? K equals two. And we're counting from the end of the linked list, right? We're getting the last K equals two nodes from the end of the linked list. So we have to count backwards. First, we're going to get the entire length of the linked list. And once we do that, we know one, two, three, four, five, right? We have five nodes in our linked list. This will also give us a pointer to the last node, the tail of our linked list. So we'll have a pointer to this tail node because we'll have reached the end of it. And we will know that length equals five. So you can see over here, I have length equals five. So that's great, right? Now we want to find this position, right? This position. That's why we got the length. How can we get to this position? Well, we, we know we have five nodes, right? Length tells us that if we're starting at this position, let's say, right? We're starting at the first node. We want to get to this node over here, right? Because we know we're going to cut in this position. So the number of positions we're going to have to move to get to this node, this node three is going to be length, length minus K minus one. The reason we have a minus one. So this is the formula for how many nodes we're going to, we're going to shift from starting at the first node over here, right? Since we're starting here, we know we take one jump and then we take two jumps and then we're here right that's what we want to do and we're minusing by one because we're already starting at the first node so we know with our math and our values we're going to get length is five minus two because that's k minus one so in reality this value turns into two that makes sense because from here we're taking two jumps to get to three okay so that's great now let's say we get to this node three right now what are we going to do we're going to take this, right? We see it's already red, right? We're, we're basically taking this pointer and instead we're assigning it to null now, right? Because we know that this is going to be the end of our linked list. So at this point, the picture is getting pretty damn messy, but we're almost done. The last thing we have to do now 
is take these last two nodes and move them over here, right? That can be done pretty easily, right? All we're doing is taking, see this five, right? That's the last node in the linked list. It's also our tail. The only thing we're going to do is take its next pointer and set it all the way back to the one, right? So obviously this has gotten pretty messy, but hopefully you can still see what we did here, right? Basically, we got this resulting length list, right? We basically did the simple operation that I was talking about earlier. We rearranged it, right? We took the five, right? And set its next pointer to one. That's what we did. And we set the three pointer to null, right? So this is pointing at null now because it's the end of the list. Four has become the new head of the length list. So that's what we've done. This was the visualization. Now let's actually get into the code and it's not too bad. Oh, and one last thing. What if K was actually bigger than the length of the input, right? Or what if K was exactly the size of the input? What if K was five? What does that mean? Five rotations. Basically, five rotations would mean that we ended up with the same exact length list. If K is equal to the length of our linked list. Basically, we're not doing any rotations, right? So now let's say K was actually six. What does K six rotations end up being? It ends up being five rotations, which results in the exact same list plus one rotation, right? So that would take the last node and put it at the beginning. Right, so basically what the formula we can use is the number of rotations we're going to be doing is k, which is actually going to be k modded. Okay, so the first thing we do have to worry about in this problem is that what if we get an empty linked list? So what if the linked input linked list is empty? In that case, we know that we can't really do any rotations on it. So we're just going to return that empty linked list. Next thing we want to do is actually get the length of that link of our linked list. So we're going to use a couple of variables length and we're going to get the tail of the linked list in the process of doing that. So initially the length is going to be one because we know we at least have one uh, input node that's not null and the tail is initially going to be set to the head node which we know for sure the head node is not null so while there's a next node for us to iterate to we're going to do exactly that we're going to move to that position to the next position of the linked list and we're going to increment our length by one now we're going to do what i talked about we're going to take k and mod it by the input length just to reduce it to a number that's less than the length and what we know now is if k is equal to zero that means that uh, basically the, k, the number of rotations is a multiple of the length of the length list so we're going to end up not doing any rotations on it so once again we can actually return the head of the length list so the next thing we're going to do is move to the pivot and actually perform the rotate so we're initially going to start at the head node so current is going to be at head and then we're going to iterate a certain number of times so for i in range this tells us how many times we're going to execute this loop and i'm going to do just like i showed you earlier we're going to take the entire length subtract k and subtract one that's how many positions we want to move to so we can find that pivot position and then actually uh, actually perform the rotation so every iteration we're going to move to the next position of our linked list and this is all we need to do. So now we're at current is at the node that we're going to do the pivot rotation thing at, right? So what I'm going to do is current dot next. We know this is actually going to be the new head, right? Current dot next is going to be the new head. So we're going to save that in a variable. Now what we're going to do is actually update current dot next and set it to null because we know that this is the pivot position. This is going to be the new end of the linked list. And lastly, we also want the tail of our linked list. Remember, we did calculate our tail variable up here. We got it to the end of the linked list and we want to set that now we want to set tail.next to the beginning of the linked list, just like I showed you in the picture. We can do that by just setting it to head. And now that new head variable that we saved up here, now it's time for us to actually return that, the new head of the linked list. And then we're all done with this efficient uh, linear time linked list solution. We know that this is linear time because really all we're doing is iterating through the entire list, maybe I think at most twice or two or three times, right? That's all we're really doing. We're not really using extra memory or anything. So this is a an efficient 
linked list rotation solution. I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.